We just can't find good help these days. You know, maybe you've said that yourself or heard it from a colleague, but you look around nearly every type of uh, business and everyone seems to have the help wanted sign out. Even in the best environment, finding workers is tough. Of course, as challenging as things are now, this industry has been through tough times before. Tough circumstances take tough people. We're here to talk about making the best out of tough times. Shop Owner Solutions is your life preserver through the industry's rapids, getting past those 3 a.m. panics or the things that keep you awake anyway. This episode of Shop Owner Solutions is presented by 360 Payments, the automotive industry's leading credit card processor. 360 Payments makes payments simple, secure, and streamlined for auto shops through seamless integration with dozens of shop management software and DVI tools. 360 Payments offers solutions for in-person and remote payments, including text-to-pay, which lets your customers pay from their smartphone when it's convenient for them. Visit 360payments.com slash podcast to learn more. My guests today are Mike Samard from Samard's Auto in Fairbanks, Alaska, and Vic Tarasik from Shop Owner Coach. You know, it's tough enough finding help in Akron or Houston, uh, Vic, but... Boy, it's got to be incredible in Alaska, isn't it? So, so Mike, I've been to your shop. You guys are busy. Even in the hottest months of the year, July, when it's 95, I'm sure sometimes you hit 100, to the 40, to I think you said 60 below winter times. You guys are always busy. And you've been able to attract people from the States, from other, I'm sure other parts of, parts of, the, of the club, far, you know, far and wide. So much so that you're hand, able to hand referrals out to the other shops of shop or technicians that you can't use. Tell me a little bit about your program and how is it you're able to entice people to the one of the most remote regions of the globe? Sure. Well, I think it began with the reality that um, in order to, to make a change in this industry, um, as far as uh, talking about our shortage of great employees, good technicians and advisors and managers, that it was really important that uh, we did something about it ourselves. So um, in the beginning, many years ago, after doing a lot of research and learning, um, you know, we kind of established a process, um, just like any good technician would do, to approach a diagnostic process uh, for a vehicle, um, establish a process to get started and stuck with it, and then learn by trial and error. And um, you know, that really that process started with our why. Like, why are we in business? What are we doing here on this earth right now? Um, and how can we contribute uh, our strengths to the community and for each other? And if you don't start with like, why am I doing this other than making money, um, then the rest of what we're gonna talk about here today can get kind of cloudy um, as far as staying the course with, with uh, recruitment and finding good talent. So what was your why? Well, for me, when I first started, um, I always loved taking the challenging problems, kind of like this problem, right? Finding uh, great technicians and, and uh, employees in our industry. So for me, that the purpose of trying to find a way through um, a difficult challenge, um, pioneer a way, um, especially being way up there in Alaska, as you talked about the land of the extreme, the, you know, 90 plus Fahrenheit to minus 60 below, that's a really huge gap of temperatures. And it causes a lot of issues with vehicles. Um, that gap of temperatures, that extreme environment also um, keeps a lot of people out of Alaska. It's not for everyone. Okay. Um, a little bit like our industry. There's a lot of things that, that keep thing, people out of our industry but once they get to know the area in Fairbanks, once once people get to know our industry, there's a lot of things to fall in love with. So our why in the beginning was was overcoming new challenges and really love the satisfaction. I love the satisfaction of fixing something somebody couldn't um, or more importantly, just seeing that smile on that customer face, knowing that they're going to be safe driving down the road, especially in Alaska. So the, the tech, the technicians that you have attracted, what did you do to bait the hook to get them to nibble? Sure. 
Well, it's once again, it starts with our why. Why are we here? Um, um, and it really uh, went into defining how we process work and how we work together. So it's really important as I talk to technicians all across the country, there's a few things that they're looking for, right? They're looking for culture. Um, they're looking for teamwork. They're looking for a systematic process. They want to stay busy. Um, so th what, what you have to do is kind of get your house in order. Um, you need the communication between the front and back going smoothly. You need to know who's responsible for what. Um, and so that, that takes time, right? Um, and so when technicians come in um, or when we talk to them, we talk to them about our digital inspection process, um, our digital workflow flow process. We talk about our latest equipment um, and our standards. Our standards is a big thing, you know, figuring out what our why and our purpose is, but how do we get there and our mission? Um, it's extremely important that, that I believe, especially uh, all of us in this industry, should really set the bar high for professional standards. Um, so we teach them how to um, make good notes. We teach them how to do good diagnostic steps. We teach them voltage drop, um, things like that, that, you know, I can go into a little bit more. But it's, it's hugely important when, when you're talking to somebody, you want to attract them, that you're attracting the right people for the right seat. So it's, right. it's, a, it's a big deal to learn that early for yourself. Write that down and incorporate that in your process. So, so culture, would you, you said that culture was important to you. Would you say all automotive shop owners need to look at their culture and reevaluate it to, to determine what they're attracting? Absolutely. Um, you know, one of the most difficult things, especially hiring remotely, um, because that's the other thing we had to do too, Vic, is, is uh, to go back for a minute. Um, there is talent locally, but especially in my area, a couple things going on. There's a huge uh, pool of people that are going in and out of the state every year. OK, um, so we have a huge transient population as well. Some come and go. Um, and uh, there's also a lot of uh, big money um, as far as gold and oil and gas um, type companies there. Uh, the one thing we have going for us in a small you know, um, shop or a small uh, two location uh, community uh, business is that we have the ability to hire people like us. Um, and to really uh, hone in on what that culture should look like for us. Um, and we're a lot more nimble on our feet with that. So the biggest thing that we look for is those that resonate with our purpose. And then as we get closer to them, um, and in the beginning, it's several phone calls. And then as we get them here for a job trial, for example, um, and I can explain that process in a minute, but uh, that we kind of understand, are these people like us? Do they have our same values? So, um, you know, values and purpose are huge, right? Establishing who we are and how we operate together. Mm -hmm. um, so when we're talking to these people on the phone, when, when uh, we share what we're about, when we call their references, um, a lot of times when we talk to their wife on the interview, I love to do that, um, or any, any, you know, children, anybody who wants to come into those interviews, we really find out what, what they're about um, and what gets them out of bed in the morning. I think it's a hugely important thing to focus on. So culture starts with knowing who you are, who you want to work with and your values. Right. But it also is really important to try to figure out with them what they're looking for and if they fit. Okay. You just said something I, th I think is really interesting. How many shop owners do you know that will interview one person one time and hire them? Mm -hmm. Mike, you interview them multiple times and I'm not just, not just, Harry, you also interview Mary. Is what? So why 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 do you want to interview the spouse? Well, as we're talking about uh, that recruitment program for me, it started locally and had to expand nationwide, right? Mm -hmm. um, which for some people can seem very much a daunting task. Um, it's extremely, first of all, difficult to recruit just over the phone. Um, and that's the way we started many years ago. So now the interview process going video, you can do video interviews, it's more helpful. But there's still a lot of communication that gets left on the table that you don't see. So one of the sticking points we've seen in the past um, is that you know, f young families or a family of any type of structure, um, it's very difficult to move 4,000 miles 
and just leave everything behind, especially if you have a boat payment, a car payment, a house mortgage, your kids have best friends in school, um, your, your wife might be working, your spouse. Um, it is it is a, a very uh, unique thing to just up and leave and go to Alaska. So for me, I look at the approach as a holistic approach, you know, an all-encompassing approach. I always tell people I never want to break up families. I never want to get in between uh, uh, you and your family and your loved ones. And so for me, I feel like uh, I'm hiring the whole family. And um, so as much as they're willing to share, you know, it, it's their personal life. Um, look at Vic. I've had people not get on airplanes, right? I've had people spend hours with me and the the final conversation is um oh my wife said no and uh, the whole time i was told yes 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 so um without prying into their personal business i try to ask um, questions about how this is going to affect their family um, and their life moving forward so it's extremely important that we look at uh you know the not just the employees fit into our company but our fit into their world as well your situation, uh, you can't just hire short term. You're, you've got to look for that long term employee. How do you find someone with the skills you need as well as the ability to be in Alaska? Sure. Well, I can kind of explain our process of what we go through, and I'll go through an overview of it. And I think it'll help help you understand a little better how we do that. Um, so first, of course, it's the purpose, the why, our values, who we are and how we operate, right? Um, and then those standards, those standards of how our systems flow, um, we got to have that transparent for people. People have to know what we're talking about on the phone and when they hit the ground, they got to see that. So we have to live who we are um, and not just say um, these great things to get them here, right? And so uh, the next thing is, is we had to commit to a consistent interview process, a consistent recruitment process, I should say. Okay. And so for us, that starts with setting a budget, okay, sticking to it and continuing on board, re uh, ongoing recruiting. Okay. And so we have to write some good job ads that focus on features and benefits, not requirements. Job ads used to be all about, this is what we want from you. Well, we need to tell them what's in it for them first. Um, we have to have competitive wages and benefit packages. Um, we have to really then highlight the area that we live in. Every area across the country has unique things about it. And we can all kind of leverage, this is a little, little trick, right? We can all leverage the whole grass is greener on the other side of the fence. We all think around the corner could be something great and new and exciting. So no matter if you're in Washington State or Idaho or Alaska or Florida or Texas, um, there's always something unique about your area. So really put that into your job ads and feature what is unique about your areas. So once we've written those job ads, how do you place them? Companies like Indeed, LinkedIn, Facebook, Craigslist, all the different types of, of, of ads that can be placed out there. Um, using those job ads okay we also use a resume management system so when we have the jobs posted i have one place that all my resumes funnel into right now i have over six thousand resumes from many years of recruiting that i can sometimes go back and look in there and be like you know alaska or florida or or, or a tag or flag that i put on years ago about a person that i spoke to that might not be ready then but it's ready now. So we have to have a way, a process back to a consistent process to bring um, people into your system and then have conversations and record what's going on with, with them in the process. Um, the screening process is another thing um, I found in particularly um, um, that I'm not real good at first uh, judging fit in certain areas, um, mainly in the value area, meaning I love to think the best about everybody in the beginning. And I am very good ability that they have their God given talents and their strengths. And I believe I can help pull those out and I just go in with optimism. Um, but sometimes I don't see some other things that, that others do. So I learned a while ago that um, there's some things that I can't, uh, can't catch. And I have, um, 
my wife and I have my business manager. I have, basically, I get others into that screening process, which is phone, video, um, reference checks, so just several conversations. Um, and the more, the better. Um, uh, also, you get to learn the, the personality traits and the follow-up and consistency of the uh, person that you're talking to. Um, ghosting is a big thing today, right? There's a lot, oh yeah, I'm so excited about this opportunity and my wife said it's good and my kids said it's good and I'll do more research tonight. We've talked a couple times. Yeah, let's talk tomorrow at two o'clock. Ring, 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 voicemail. Text, 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 nothing. Email, nothing. And that's apparently a common thing. And I, I had to grow some thick skin. So that screening process goes on and then, then what we do, do you want me to keep going on the process? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we screen and then what we do, if, if they pass the test or if we pass their test, if, if we together want to work together, having others involved with that decision, we were going to bring them up for a trial. So we give them their job trial. And what we do is we set them up with a plane ticket. We pay half that plane ticket from, I don't care where they come from. I've even tried to get people from Europe and and Canada, you think it'd be easy to get people from Canada. There's a lot of great people in Canada. Not so easy, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we'll fly them up here and we'll pay half the bill. You know, I, I don't believe in paying a free ride for somebody. I believe it has to be skin in the game both sides. We'll pay half the bill. We'll put everything on paper. We'll put them in a housing a unit that we have. We'll give them a car to drive, a toolbox to borrow, and we'll put them under our foreman. And we'll just have them work with our people for a while. Mm -hmm. And we'll establish a relationship with them. We give them a weekend to drive around, look around Fairbanks. We interview them some more. They interview us. Um, and then we give them a relocation package. I kind of skipped ahead on that a little bit. but So several steps. The biggest, most important part we find is um, the, the job trial. And then, um, then we assist them in moving up. So I can go into more details in any one of those areas if you'd like. Yeah, let's talk about that in a second. Uh, this episode is brought to you by 360 Payments, the automotive industry's leading credit card processor. 360 Payments makes payments simple, secure, and streamlined for auto shops through seamless integration with dozens of shop management software and DVI tools. 360 Payments offers solutions for in-person and remote payments, including text-to-pay, which lets your customer pay from their smartphone when it's convenient for them. Visit 360payments.com slash podcast to learn more. Mike, talking about it, it not being for everyone and the, the process you have to go through, what led you originally to Fairbanks? Was it part of that challenge that you uh, were mentioned? Sure. Um, you know, it's fun to ask because recently um, I've been exploring back to my roots, right? Why did I start? What are we here for? Um, because really, that really helps you see others um, and help them decide if you're a good fit for them. You know, it's equally important that they interview you. And so I remember when I was 19 years old, um, I had heard about Alaska, okay? And... And uh, Vermont was a great area to live in. I'm just leaving from vacation to visit my folks up there. I love it up there. But there was something intriguing about Alaska. There was something intriguing about what's over the next hill. Okay. So for me, um, and this is one of the things I, I want to mention. So for me, it was running to opportunity. Okay. So the best kind of candidates I find, this is something I've recently learned in the last, in the last year or two. So when I interview uh, a technician, let's say, um, from the lower 48, as we call it, um, I want to find people that are, are not running away from something, okay? I want to find people that are running to opportunity. And so I had to process this recently because I had a, a batch of candidates that would come up and they seem like a good fit at first. Um, I'd get some help with that and you bring them up here. And here's the thing. If, if people are not happy in their life, right, moving to Florida or Texas or Alaska from wherever they are, eventually, right, that issue, that lack of joy and happiness in their career and their life, that's going to follow them. 
the issues with your relationships, whatever it might be, addiction issues especially. So what I realized, like, wait a minute here. If, if, if we can kind of look at our interview questions and talk to our leadership team, you know, like how can we make sure that we're fit for them, they're fit for us, and they want to be where we live. And every area has a unique area of, of the things that are awesome about their area. So we want to find people that are here for opportunity. And if it's opportunity for growth, um, achievement, recognition, responsibility, development, training, right? Just money, I haven't got there yet. That We're going to pay really well too. Um, but if they would be there for those things, to be part of something bigger than themselves, okay, then that's the kind of person that, that, that we're looking for. But if they want to run away from problems, which, hey, look, we've, we've all done that. We've hired someone and we realize that they're just never going to be happy, right? They're become our little project. We're going to try to fix them. And right, Vic, we've done that. Before. It doesn't work. We have, we have. We can be there for them. We can point them in the right direction. We give them the tools for growth and achievement. We can recognize when they do that. Um, but just like when I wanted to go there, okay, I fortunately was blessed to be able to know what I wanted to do, okay, and 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 how I was going to get there. Um, Alaska just I didn't exactly know that, but I looked at that as land of opportunity, and it sure was. I mean, we have, like you said, Vic, more work that you can handle for at least eight, ten months out of the year. And um, it was that opportunity that, that drew us. So that's one thing that would help people when they're looking into things. Make sure that people are moving to your area for the right reasons. And you want them to move there for opportunity versus running away from something that will eventually catch up with them. That seems like a good uh, uh, mantra for any shop, regardless of where you're located. Yeah, it, it is. Mike and I deal with the same, the same way. We try and fix people. Mike? You know, yep. we've known each other for years. We, we have the same uh, approach to, to life. We want to help people. It's just normal part of what we do. Unfortunately, it can get us in trouble. And I love what Mike said. Find someone that's running to something. Problems are going to follow them. You're not the solution. You are there to provide an opportunity for someone who wants to add value to you not be there to pick up their pieces. You're right. We can't be there for them through challenges, but if the primary reason is to go to Alaska or go to Texas or Georgia is to get away from something, you're already starting to have the deficit. Yeah. Mike, you said that you have a, a, a log gem, perhaps, of resumes that you haven't been able to use or haven't fit for uh, one reason or another. How often do you go through the recruitment process? And how often then do you, as Vic said earlier, share those resumes with other shops? Sure, good question. Um, we have a steady stream of resumes that are coming in at all times. And so the, the amount of resumes that come in, of course, are dependent upon market, seasons, um, you know, whatever the collective mindset of the industry is of who's looking, when, and how. Right now, right, the market's really tight, right? Um, everybody's coming back to work. People are driving again. They're not making new cars as fast as they can, need to, want to. Um, and so people are fixing their cars. Um, and so there's not a lot steady stream. So just like marketing when you're slow at a shop, right? You could spend a lot more money to try to get cars in when people don't want to spend versus marketing funds when you're going to be busy, it's going to be a lot easier to get them in. So right now the market's tough. Um, the biggest thing is that consistency. So we have a budget and, you know, I would, I would dare say people could start with maybe half a percent, one percent of their budget for recruitment. Um, it just depends where you're comfortable starting. But we get resumes in um, sometimes daily, sometimes two or three resumes a day. And the hardest part is to discipline yourself when you don't need help to continue to monitor your resumes, continue to look at those. So when a resume comes into us, remember, I, remember I told you I have that, um, that funnel resume into the resume management system. You don't need one of those. You can use paper system, paper files. We've tried it all, whatever works for you, but be consistent. So if you get a resume that comes in and it looks like um, this person could fit, remember you're looking mainly at skills. So you just still, the soft stuff is what we really want to see for your purpose, your why, your strengths. 
who you are, what you want in life, right? But it's a good start. Is this person even qualified, right? Do they own tools? Whatever it is you're looking for. So you have to stay disciplined to talking to these people even when you're not looking. Just establish a relationship. Let them know that maybe you're, you're not recruiting right now, that you're always looking for top talent, you want to grow, and the only way you're going to do that, especially up where we live, is to continue to look. Um, so how often do I go back? Um, when we have a position that's going to come open, I can go back and I can look at my notes. Um, I have a system that I use, uh, you know, one star, five stars, um, and I have little tags and flags on there to, to quickly identify people that I've talked to. And it's a funny because you talk to someone once or twice and you're, you know, your brain remembers them. Vic, Vic said uh, uh, a couple things, uh, but one of the things uh, in the beginning he was talking about um, working with other shops, okay? Um, a couple of things that was surprising to me, it's like all good marketing. I've been in Texas before and I've had technicians come up to me, no Vic, it wasn't your shop, but they said, uh, uh, hey, I've seen your ads. As a matter of fact, I saw your ads two years ago, and it's just never been a right time, or my wife wasn't ready, or our kids were born, and things like that. So it's it's really cool to see the effect of a consistent recruitment process. And don't let off the gas. You know, you reduce your budget when you're when you're staff. Don't let off the gas. You can always go back to it. You can always refer to it. Um, and then sometimes, though, like Vic talked about, you know, referring to other shops. Sometimes you get somebody there that's a good, a good technician or good qualified, but maybe they're just not a fit, right? Maybe they're just not a fit for your company for whatever reason. Um, and that's where you can pick up the phone and our Napa Auto Care groups, for example, and be like, hey, I have somebody. I know you're looking for somebody. Um, here's, here's the strengths and weaknesses of this person. I'm thinking they may be a good fit for you. Um, and that goodwill goes a long ways, especially if you're the other, other guy that doesn't have the recruitment program. And, uh, you know, I believe working together in our industry is hugely important to to keep raising the bar and rising the rising tide raises all boats. So um, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. What are the technologies that are uh, getting to be more and more challenging to recruit for? Um, what do you mean? How, how do you mean that? Well, your let's talk about your customer base. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I'm picturing a lot of diesel trucks, um, some cars, but mostly mostly heavier duty vehicles. Is that what you need from technicians, or do you need you know is your is their skill set uh, more general? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So for us, and it's it's kind of an old school mentality, I suppose. For us, I really, I'm really looking for that A tech that can, or, or any tech that wants to learn and grow how to basically fix anything. So for example, you can teach somebody how to follow a OEM um, flow chart, which is hugely important. But we, we try to focus on teaching them how to think. So for example, one of the, one of the things uh, for agnostic strategies is voltage dropping. You know, and, and so I would say, 97 out of 100 technicians I ask, do you know how to voltage drop? Sure. Okay, how do you do it? And a lot of them, the first thing they say is, I'll disconnect the wires at both ends and ohm test it. And I'm like, okay, good start, right? Um, but no, <laughs> that's not what I meant. And so so what we try to do is, is to bring people in, and they may be a Subaru tech or GM tech, whatever it is. And if they want to grow, we say, okay, we want to build upon what you have, okay? Um, and teach you more things. So for us, yeah, it's heavy duties, uh, uh, light duty to medium duty trucks. Um, we do a lot of Subaru, Toyota, um, a lot of all wheel drive stuff. Um, and so uh, uh, I would say it's for the most part, like I was in Denver here recently, um, Northern climate type vehicles. We have a lot of pickups, Subarus, Toyotas, four wheel drives and uh, Volvos, European, um, Audi, Volkswagen. So for us, we're looking for a well-rounded. Now, we don't have salt in our area, which is awesome because I'm coming back from this area. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe right, how difficult it was to work um, up here in these salt country areas. But uh, that means we get 69 Volkswagen Vanagans, you know, and you have to go to a technician that come out of UTI and be like, um, don't forget, well, I can't get this carburetor. I just can't get it to, to run right. It's like, well, there's valve adjustment and compression tests. Go back to your old school books. Like, like first thing you do, let's let's do compression, air spark fuel, right? 
And so reminding people of basics is huge um, when they're like, oh my gosh, I, I can't learn all these mixed modes. Yeah, you can, you can. So there's some basic principles and things that we start with and help if they don't already know it, to help them kind of widen their tent. And we always tell them, look, if you can fix anything on the road, you're gonna have an awesome resume. And we want you to stay here and retire, but you know, just the fact that we wanna to contribute to you we want to help feed you um, and make you a, a better technician um, in the world to come. So I hope that answers your question. Mm -hmm. Get on a tangent, you know, you can just stop me. So talk to me about apprenticeships. What are you doing? You looked at the Canadian model. I, I was talking to Murray Voth at RPM. He said that you were sniffing around BC. They were helping you get their, their their program in place up there. Did you guys ever get that in place? And if you did, what's it look like? If you didn't, what's it look like? Yeah, so um, we did look at some outside models from different countries that have kind of a higher professional standard certification process. Mm -hmm. um, and so we looked at a few of those things. We looked at some of the online training, like Cars on Demand, for example, um, out of uh, Canada for some of our educational components. Um, and we also, um, we're currently working on a program um, trying to get the Votech schools with our federal registered apprenticeship program, which we have, um, which everybody should have resources um, lowly to develop a, a journeyman certificate program for a two to four year apprenticeship. Okay, it includes on the job training um, and uh, um, uh, education component through their Votech school or after hours video training. Um, so we established that we've had a couple people go through that process and we're getting ready to revise it um, the uh, one of the candidate pipelines we're looking at as well is um, is our military there's a lot of great uh, candidates coming out of our military um, over the years of recruiting um, from all across the country we had a lot of uh, technicians that were just getting out of the military that i didn't consider qualified for the civilian world but they had all those great disciplinary uh, uh, items we talked about, those cultural items. They understand the why and the purpose and organizational health and teamwork, um, nuts and bolts and wrenches. Um, and there's some assistance that can come from them and from the military and the GI Bill, um, the military TAPS program, the transitional programs to help them into a shop like ours uh, or anybody that's listening to this podcast and uh, they can go ahead and get into an apprenticeship that they can set up. Um, so there's a model out there. Napa Auto Care has a, a decent model to start with um, that people can refer to. They don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Um, and so they can get into an apprenticeship, get it registered in their area, okay? Get the edu education component to that. Um, they can look at pipelines like Votech schools, high schools, military, people coming out because they have that consistent recruitment program going on, right? So they, they have that recruitment program and when they see those people come in, not, not everybody has to be an ATEC in your shop, right? And so if we say, oh, I only want ATECs, well, well, who taught you once, right? So if someone gave you a chance, so we've got to build that pipeline within our, our shop. And I believe that's, that's how we're going to change this industry. That's how we're going to fill our bays in the future is we've got to go back to our roots about how we used to train and mentor people. Mm -hmm. And um, the apprenticeship uh, is, is just gives consistent professionalism to that process. So you're talking about a different version of Grow Your Own. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'd like to thank Mike Samard from Samard's Automotive in Fairbanks, Alaska, for taking the time to join us today and remind us that as far away as you are, you're not alone. This industry, we're all going through the same things maybe in a different way, but we're all here. We're all working together. This episode of Shop Owner Solutions has been brought to you by 360 Payments, the automotive industry's leading credit card processor. Visit 360payments.com slash podcast to learn more. Mike, thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate the insight. I appreciate being here. Thanks for your time. So before we go, I want to re recap with the listeners. So Mike, you said, know your values, look for a fit, have multiple interviews, have a budget, always be recruiting, don't take your foot off the gas, look at the apprenticeship programs out there. And this can be applied to any shop in the United States. 
Absolutely. Mike, thank you. Absolutely. You, you've had a lot of value today. Yep. On behalf of Victor Osik, I'm Doug Kaufman. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you again soon.